Welcome to Microsoft Social Engagement Module 6, Taking Action. My name is Julie Yak. Our agenda for this module will cover several different areas. We'll start with workflows and automation and how do we use the power of the Dynamics platform to give us a better social presence. We'll talk through changing sentiment and tagging of posts. How can we help make things better organized and useful with a group of users? Posting and replying from directly within the social engagement client. We'll talk through how and why you might block a domain or some words or some other choices we have there. And then we'll start talking through some machine learning where we'll talk about teaching the implementation, the sentiment and intent of the traffic that you see. So first we go through workflows and automation. So workflows and automation in Dynamics 365 is a lot of what gives that platform the power. We have several different choices available to us as we can see. These top two items in blue, business rules and business process flows, are ones that are generally implemented by power users and business analysts, functional consultants, those types of roles. Workflows are implemented with both developer options and those same functional user options. Custom actions require developers to some degree, and then again, that business analyst or functional consultant can take in. And then custom code is obviously something that is written by a developer. So for our business rules, it gives us the if then else automation. So if field one has a value of X, then make field two required. It can also do simple math and calculations. You can show and hide fields on the forms. And we have options here to make this client side or server side. Business process flows give an interactive experience to the user directly on the form. We have the ability to enforce policy and approvals and to do branching and trigger more automation from this business process flow. And again, it's right there on the form for the user, so it's easy for them to follow the procedures we put in place. Workflows can be real-time or background several different reasons for either one that's beyond the scope of this course but some common things that we use workflows for would be notifications interacting with external systems and so on custom actions give us multi-step declarative logic and we get the choice of several different input and output parameters to put those into place and then that full-on custom code with the plugin gives us the sky's the limit for our process automation choices so how does this apply to social? So let's start here on the top right where we have post sent to Dynamics 365. Once it's been sent, we may want to trigger a workflow to notify the customer service representative that there is a new case that came in because we've obviously already set up our intention analysis and we have that selected to be a new case record. So the customer service representative is then reviewing the case and following that business process form that shows us how we can step through and solve that case. While all of this is happening, we have a plugin that's completing a scoring algorithm for us on that case record to give us some kind of idea of whether or not this is potential win or a potential negative impact on our organization. Then once that customer service representative has completed that case and had a satisfactory outcome with the client or potential client, then that triggers a workflow notice to let the manager know that the case has been resolved. That is obviously an oversimplified way of explaining how some of this automation could work, but that's a good introduction for us. So in order to make use of this automation, you'll need to configure and authenticate the application. So to connect to it, you'll need to be a licensed user for both Dynamics 365 and Microsoft Social Engagement. You'll need the system administrator role within Dynamics 365. And from which version of the software are you running? For the online version, you need to be upgraded to at least Dynamics 365 online 2015 update one or later. And on premises, you'll need to be Dynamics 365 with internet facing deployment with a public IP address. To enable the communication between Dynamics 365 and Microsoft Social Engagement, you need to allow the connection. It is separate but similar to connecting the processes between Dynamics 365 and other compatible applications. So we have the concept here of allowed domains. 
This enables the communication between MSE and the compatible applications. You will have to go in and manually add the domains to social engagement, and you can add or remove these domains once you're in there. And this requires administrator access in the social engagement application. We have domain options for how you might like to interact with having some of that communication. So you can do the full domain, you can do the domain and wildcards, or you can do the host name. Something important to make note of as you're filling in these configurations, you'll need to make sure to remove any trailing slashes from that domain name so that you can expect the behavior that you desire. So let's go ahead and do a demonstration now of adding a connection between our social engagement and our Dynamics 365. So if we're going to engage with Microsoft Social Engagement and Dynamics 365, we have configuration to do on both sides of the equation. So you'll see here that we are in our settings area in connections. I went to Dynamics 365 and you'll see that I don't have any connections created yet. So we'll select add. We have disclaimer to review and accept. And then we choose the connection type. We're going to do online. And I have a URL here for my organization and we'll get this added. We're going to authenticate. We'll see that it's good to go. And then we will test the connection. Then from there, we'll move on to the next step. You'll see here that we have authenticated just fine and that we have some defaults that are already in place. We're going to have this enabled in here and we're going to actually turn this on as our default. We want to confirm that and then we'll save this. And now let's go pick up on the Dynamics 365 side. Now here we are in Dynamics 365. Let's move over to our settings area and we will enable it from this side here. So we go to the social engagement configuration page and we select our instance and we choose select. But before I do, you'll see that we do have the option here. If we do need to come back in the future and repave and reset this instance, we can do that directly from here. So here we select it and that will enable the engagement between the two applications. If the behavior that you're seeing as you do this is different than what I'm doing here, a couple of troubleshooting points would be something like perhaps maybe your organization doesn't have licensing for both social engagement and Dynamics 365 configured for your user. Perhaps maybe you don't have the proper administrator of privileges in one of those applications to be able to make those choices either. Those are just some potential troubleshooting areas for us. Now give me just a minute while this configures and we'll come back and I will set up another connection for you and show you how to bring that social data into Dynamics 365. So now that that configuration has completed, we are at our dashboards area. Let's make ourselves a personalized dashboard and we're just going to step through some of the motions here so you can see that we've got social items available to us for our dashboard. So let's just give it a quick name and we now have that icon for social engagement. We can choose a search topic or a search category and step right through this wizard-like experience. You can see we have our topics list or create a new one and we step right through that wizard and we can add the different visualizations. We can add several visualizations. We can change them. We can build the different widgets that we'd like to build and we can get that finished and added to our dashboard like any other dashboard that we have here in Dynamics. And we can size that. We can make it bigger to use up more space that we've got. Just your standard personalized dashboard that we already have in Dynamics. And now you see here our social engagement dashboard. We have our analytics summary. We have our location. We have some posts as well as the details about the posts, the locations, and so on right here in our Dynamics dashboard. And that connection that we've done has enabled that two-way communication so we can then continue on to do the automation and bring records over from social engagement into Dynamics 365. 
So now that you've connected Dynamics 365, you can define entity details in social engagement to specify information for the social activity entity that is created when you link a post to Dynamics 365. When you are satisfied with that configuration of those entities, you can then configure the record creation rules in Dynamics 365 to automatically create those new records from the social activity entities. So we create the new records from social posts, we can update existing records, we can define the receiving attributes from posts into Dynamics 365 for customer engagement, and then we can use all of that information for the automation and processes that we've already discussed. Changing sentiment and tagging of our posts. So changing of sentiment, why would you want to change the sentiment? Well, it's a machine learning process and we need to train it. Maybe we have specific words or phrases that mean certain things within our business model that are not quite the same as the rest of the industry, or maybe our industry is completely different with the terms that we use. So what this is doing is it's changing the sentiment in your database to be whatever it is that you have manually assigned. You could also, if you're just wanting to confirm the sentiment engine, you can just do a confirm on that post to show that you have evaluated it and confirm that that is what the sentiment is. So now let's do a demonstration here where I'll just go through and show us how we can change and adjust that post sentiment as necessary. As we look here at our post views, we can see that we have several items here with positive sentiment, a little bit of neutral, some negative. So we're going to do some corrections here. You know, this one right here looks like it's perhaps a job listing, and I don't know that that would really necessarily be something that is positive or negative. So let's make that one into neutral. You'll see that it's been starred, so we know that it has been altered. And what we're doing is we're teaching the sentiment engine that we have several things we are correcting. We can edit several at the same time. Again, we have these two job postings and let's edit the sentiment and make them both neutral. And you'll see that we have these stars here again. So you can edit individual posts or you can edit as a collection. So tagging is something we can do that will help make things more organized from a group perspective. So social engagement lets you add one or more custom tags to your posts. You can then filter the posts to match specific custom tags. Custom tags are different from intention tags because they are not predefined and they are not automatically added once a post is acquired. Each post acquired needs a custom tag manually added. Users can then define streams by assigning custom tags. Only managers and responders can create that new custom tag, but any user can add or remove the tags on the posts. So from a implementation perspective, you can add it from a post view. You'll see the tags item. You have a maximum of 20 tags per post. And once you manually add those tags, you can curate items to send to your social selling assistant. So these custom tags obviously use that social selling assistant and it can promote those posts to your sales team. Then as you're building searches and using the application throughout, what this is offering you as your tags is one more filter choice within your search setups. Posting and replying from within the application offers you the chance to not have to have many items open at once. You can have the single application open and do that interaction all from the same place. This allows you to engage with all those platforms at the same time, gives you a chance to perhaps use as a, a team for official messaging. If you've got an authenticated account with a large audience, you may have more than one person engaged socially answering you on an official capacity. They can all be managed within social engagement. In order to use this, you must be a responder or manager role in social engagement. And again, this requires a fully authenticated account within social engagement. We've covered this in module two a little bit, but let's bring this back full circle for us. You have the ability to do private messages as both a user or a page user within Facebook from social engagement. From Twitter, you can do tweets or retweets and private messages. And also using the social selling assistant, you can post a link through LinkedIn. Again, all of these with your authenticated accounts. 
Now let's move on to blocking. You can block content. You navigate to this area via your search settings, not from global settings, but from the searches. And you have a couple of ways that you could do this. You can block words and you can block domains. So you can block blog posts and more, whatever it is that's coming from that domain for something that is perhaps disruptive or doesn't provide value to your social engagement strategy. So blocking the full on domain, fabricam.com would also block any of those subdomains. And then blocking keywords is a way to globally remove matching posts. Be careful with what you do here because that does have a global impact. Excluding words and phrases with that blocking, we can exclude by a single word or a phrase. It is simple text matching, so there is no language specific matching. If you've got historical data that has matches on those, it will hide those items for you, but removing that block will unhide it. Moving forward, it will block the ingestion of any new data. You could use this perhaps to remove incorrect content across the entire subscription, across the entire organization. You can use it to get rid of spam. And you can use some naughty language filters, but be careful because sometimes naughty language as a compliment can be something to say, this is awesome, but then they want to add emphasis to it using what some might consider naughty words. Instead of the blanket blocking would be exclusions within your specific searches. This is a way where you can more directly manage that. And from a user perspective, it's, it's a similar outcome for the experience for the posts that they are exposed to. Teaching sentiment with this time invested up front, it makes this much more valuable and it improves your quality of your analysis on those collected posts. With every edit on the sentiment value of posts, it contributes to the way that sentiment is determined for your organization. You can turn it on and off as you like, and once you get the sentiment engine understanding your way of doing business, gathering posts and so on, you can disengage the learning. You can also reset and repave that sentiment learning engine. Resetting discards all manually set sentiment values in the system and starts that learning all over again. It is certainly a sledgehammer approach. By default, your adaptive learning will be engaged within your global settings. You have the ability to turn that on and off as we discussed, and then you can reset that from here as well. So we cover a lot of different options here within this module. We went through our workflows and automation choices and how that use of the Dynamics platform and the power behind that platform can help us be more engaged from a social perspective and the customer side. We can change our sentiment and tagging to help make things more useful for a group and to help have more accurate information. We can authenticate certain accounts and do posting and replying directly from within the social application. There's blocking of both words and domains that we could use, as well as simply adding exclusions to our searches instead. And then we have machine learning where we can start to teach sentiment and intent for our posts and those items that might be specific to our organization or to our line of business. We do have a hands on for you for this module. We will be going through a few exercises by using default and custom tags. We can reply to posts within and you'll be stepping through some of that and then we'll go through an exercise for blocking of content.